Because I actually feel like there's like a new PB on the way, you know? I feel like maybe this is the this is the week that we get it. A new PB. Chimchar squeaks ahead. Wow, you guys actually gave me a useful starter. It's crazy. Please give me Badoo. Give me Badoo. Badoo. Oh, yes! Sorry, I'm so hyped. Oh, this is so good. Almost ideal encounters for every single first encounter so far. Okay, we eat the bulldoze here. We go for bubble beam, kill the onyx. Archon comes in, we bubble beam for damage. Ooh, nice damage actually. Ooh, we kill the Archon, perfect. Oh, yes. Oh, it's GG. Oh, so nice. Oh, this went even better than I thought it would. GG, GG, actually GG. Now we are officially cooking. This run is looking pretty good. I think it's actually going to be a cub foo again. Isn't that crazy? I think it's actually going to be one. Actually, it might not be because that hatched pretty fast. <laughs> Such a bad wonder egg, man. Honestly, could be worse though. Could be worse. Could be worse. It actually could be worse. We'll just go here because we can afford to actually lose this Pokemon. I don't think we outspeed. So we just go Aqua Jet here for damage. Matt Pat Rat for hypnosis. Perfect. Seed Bomb for damage. Huge kill. Massive kill. Actually massive kill. Hypnosis. Seed Bomb. Yep. Hypnosis. Huge. Seed Bomb. Nice. And Seed Bomb. Okay. Well, there we go. GG. It was that easy. I'm telling you, Pat Rat is such a god. It's actually so good. Dudes, can you pick me up some Burger King? Unfortunately, Burger King is um, terribly awful food. And so I would never subject my good pal Escape Orb to that food. Wow, hi dudes, looking so good with the fresh cut in all caps. Wow, thank you, Chelsea. That is nice of you to say. I got a fresh haircut from a very expensive, well-known establishment, like a, like a like really like bougie barber. Pretty well-known actually in the Pacific Northwest. They're called um, Great Clips. Probably have never heard of them though. Now we're good, chat. We're making kind of record time here with the SSN. That was a very clean. That's how you know the run is going well. When you're able to get through things that are usually a little difficult in basically no issue. We lead setting up toxic spikes and grassy terrain and we're gonna be good. So it sets up electric surge here, chat. But what we do to counter it is we grassy terrain. Shit on, nerd. And then he's just gonna keep spamming discharge. Bush Light's main goal here is to just set up toxic spikes and then kill the Pinchurchin. There's one. I love that the AI does not switch the Pinchurchin out. It is wonderful. I just very much appreciate it. And we didn't get paralyzed. So good, perfect start. Actual perfect start to the battle. Okay, this is easy. I'm actually glad it sent out Raichu because it's going to use Psy Shock. And so we just send in Umbreon. There's the Psy Shock, actually an idiot. And then what we do is we go for Confuse Ray because it's likely going to send in another Pokemon. Yep. Vikavolt comes in. Easy Confuse Ray here. That would be extremely hype if it hit itself in confusion. Nice, excellent. Because now we can Rock Tomb, do a bunch of damage and lower the speed, which doesn't really matter the speed wise, but we just get some damage in, which is good. Snaps out. It goes for energy ball. Why would you do that? You're throwing, you're actually throwing. Why would you do such a thing? You're just making it so easy on me. Okay, Raichu comes back in. Again, very easy turn here. We go into Bush Light. Actually, yeah, Bush Light. We then switch into Umbreon once again. We then assume that it is going to Volt Switch. So then we go into the run. There's the Volt Switch. Free turn of shitting on this Raichu. Switch back into, let's see, it's gonna go for probably Grass Knot. So if it's going for Grass Knot, we go back into Bush Light. Do you see the play? Oh, went for Psy Shock. Mm. Why? You have a super effective Grass Knot, you shitter. Why did you do this? Why did you do this to me? Why did you do this? Uh, we're gonna Sucker Punch. Should kill, yeah, excellent. Big kill, big kill, big kill. We're going to Moonlight here. It does go Thunderfang. 
This is going to do a lot of damage, but we have very high defense this time around, so we can actually tank that. So we're going to get back to full health, and then we're going to use Dig. There we go. That's what I thought might happen. So we forced the Vika Volt back out. So now I believe Pollen Puff should kill. Let's see. His special defense isn't that great. We have max special. Nice. Huge damage. Huge kill. Massive kill. Do I outspeed? I don't. Okay. So because my speed IV is bad, I do not outspeed this thing. Beautiful. Beautiful. This is why we love the toxic spikes. Because now Manectrike has to come in. It's now going to mega evolve and go for charge beam. Oh, it went for volt switch. It's not even trying to go charge beam. That's actually huge. It's just so fucking easy with Roserade. God, it's so good. So incredibly free, man. Like, it's insane how much easier that is. So incredibly free. Holy shit, we got a ruffle it. Actually, decent encounter. Let's go. Huge. Chat, we of course named this um Kona Kona Cores. There we go. America Bird. Now we get what we hope and pray is a Scyther. We don't necessarily have to get Scyther here, but it makes things drastically easier. Scyther or Heracross? One of the two. No, man. It's always the it's just, it's so depressing. It's such a good area for encounters. And this is like the worst one. In specific situations, maybe it's decent, but it's just hustle is ass. It's such a terrible ability and it's hidden ability is truant. It just doesn't have any good abilities. It's quad weak to fire. So it's not even good in this gym because two of the Pokemon just one shot it anyways. So bad. Man. Let's see how it goes. So the initial plan here is to try to set up some toxic spikes. Hopefully it doesn't go for high horsepower. I'm kind of hoping it goes for like uh, like U-turn. That would be kind of cool. Okay, it went for U-turn. I don't know how it's outspeeding me though. Okay, it sent in Venusaur. Well, it would have to switch Venusaur out to actually take those away. It's gonna go Earth Power. It's gonna Mega Evolve. And then I imagine it's gonna go Earth Power because it has Giga Drain and Sludge Bomb. Oh, I guess it could go Sludge Bomb. Do I need Bush Light the rest of this fight? That's the real question. Do I need it beyond this? Or could I safely let it just die here? Or I sacrifice it and go for a second set of Toxic Spikes. I think the chip damage is more valuable here. We'll just go chip damage. Should do like a little chunk of health here. That's not bad. We'll take it. Okay. That's what I was worried about it was going for. I thought it might go sludge bomb, which was why I needed to not let anything switch into that. Now that that's the case, this is why we have Sago's balls. We did a ton of chip damage there, so we can go for psychic. Well, we know it's going to go Earth Power here. So this should be a clean switch in, I think. Now, I imagine it's going to go for some cringe shit. So we are going to go dual wing beat for big damage. And then how much does Sludge Bomb do here? That's the real question. Does this one shot? If it does, it's fine. It doesn't. Nice. Okay, cool. So we're going to get the kill on Venusaur. Okay, and I love that it just went into Rillaboom. I love that it just went into Rillaboom. That's huge. So now everything that comes in is going to get hit with those toxic spikes. I'm going to go for a roost and it goes for U-turn, which is fine because then something else has to switch in and get poisoned. And now that Venusaur is off the, off the table, we're good. Perfect. Perfect. I, yes, dude. Yes, dude. Yes, dude. Okay. Because now something has to switch in to Gale Wings dual wing beat. Oh, and it doesn't even switch. Perfect. Yes. Shit on nerd. Oh my God. Okay, that's so big. Electrode. This is what I imagined was gonna come in. This is fine. It gets poisoned. Now we do get priority here with dual wing beat, but obviously we do not wanna stay in it against Electrode. So this is where we go into Sago's balls because he can tank basically everything. This will do about a third, I think, of our health. Loses some HP, takes some poison damage. All we gotta do is hope we wake up here and hit Venoshock. Beautiful. Oh, you went for the foolish explosion. Oh, yes, man. Yes, man. Yes, man. Oh, beautiful. The key thing here is that this thing is going to use Dazzling Gleam, and it is going to hurt. It is going to hurt big time. And so we have to consider, does Fire Punch kill, I wonder? If it doesn't, we're still fine, because all it has left is Meganium and Rillaboom. Oh, beautiful. Even this, I don't even think this is going to kill. Oh, it doesn't even, oh, that's right, because I'm part fire. So it doesn't even, it's not even super effective. Oh, it's GG. It's actually GG. It's actually extremely GG. 
like supreme GG. So incredibly free. Holy, okay, 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 wow, okay. <laughs> oh my God, man. Oh my God, it's so free. It's so free. We've already won. We've simply already won, dude. Another Erica fight in the books. And it was a one shot, dude. Beautiful. Beautiful Erica fight. According to all known laws, known laws of aviation, there's no way the bee should be able to fly. Its body proportions wouldn't allow it. The bee, of course, flies anyway because the bee doesn't care what humans think. Honestly, I just got chills, man. So hypothetically, Talonflame could basically solo most of this fight, um, assuming that this information is accurate. I, I do think this battle is very doable this time around. We are once again in the market for an exclusive fucking Pokemon here. We get to pick one of these, okay? These are all of our options. You guys are gonna have to help me vote here. Oh, it turns out it is Beldum. Beldum with a clean sweep. I don't think anybody voted for anything else. So we get Beldum once again. He leads with Hitmontop, all right? We lead Joler to lower its attack so we can set up Dragon Dance, all right? The hope is that he stays in and tries to fight. That would be great. Fake out's fine, that's what we expected. Nice, that does nothing. Oh, wait, it hits three times. Oh, it actually does quite a bit of damage. We should be able to survive one more of those just fine, which would give us two dragon dances. Oh, he swapped into Polyrath like an actual loser, dude. But it's fine, man. We have two dragon dances. We're going to thrash, see if this does enough to kill. And it does. It's probably going to be Lucario next, I imagine. This thing has to eat a plus two thrash from Gyarados. Oh, critical hit. Oh, huge. Huge crit! Hitmontop comes back in. Now we can swap Joler out because we just got two massive kills. Let's go Bushlight. We're gonna protect just to see what it goes for. It is still going for triple kick. Interesting. I can just heal then. Break the sash, get some health back. Oh, there it is. So why wasn't it going for that first? I don't understand. Bushlight was here to take down the Polyrath anyways. So this is a fine kill because now we can go with... um. I'm pretty sure X can just kind of go ham here with the rest of his team. Now that Lucario's gone, because there's no more like priority moves on the field. So this is the Sneasler. This is the one that we're really hoping we can one shot. Oh, easily, easily. Oh, it's so free. It's so, this is a Joler. This is a Joler. This is simply a Joler battle. So incredibly free. Oh my God, man. Chat, this might be the run. Chat, I told you. You guys are like, don't get cocky. I told you, man. So free. Drain punch, such a good move. Ooh, it's such a good move. Wait, he doesn't give the focus sash. I thought he gave focus sash. Wait, somebody told me he gave focus sash, man. It's an expert belt, which is still good, but. <laughs> After you beat Chuck, show him a Pokemon with at least 150 attack EVs. I should just talk to him again. Chat, this egg hatches into a like radical red exclusive form of a Pokemon. And we've only seen like a handful of them, but they're always pretty cool when we see them. So I'm kind of hoping for something good. You look like a cockroach TBH. It says first time chatter, definitely not Favna's alt. Also check this out. Look at this Pokemon. It's not a cockroach. Ooh, actually kind of is a cockroach. Wait, what is this typing? Chat, what should we name this little like brown sizzlepeed? Do we name it cockroach? Wait, it's ground bug? This is kind of cool. We've beaten Giovanni before. We know how the haunch crow works. We are remembering that it has sucker punch and we are coming prepared. So what we do here is we have a couple of options. Psychic is the obvious one, but he can read that. The AI could read that and switch immediately into haunch crow. So honestly, one of the safest bets we have here, believe it or not, because of the Shucka Berry, one of our safest bets is just going Scald. And if they switch into something else, actually, there's no way the AI is switching out here, right? Because they know ground is super effective. We go Scald. Wow, it actually stayed in. It's gonna do a lot of damage, might kill, honestly. Doesn't kill, that's fine. We know it's going for Earth Power again. So we're going to protect just to confirm it's going for Earth Power. There it is. Now we get a free switch in to Talonflame who is gonna be able to finish it off, no problem. And that's gonna heal up our Slow King. We just force this thing into either switching out or taking this hit. It takes the hit, we get the kill. Huge kill. What we can do with Rotom is it's likely going to be going for an electric attack. 
So we U-turn here, very likely going for its own Volt Switch or Discharge. We go into Jolt a lot here. There it is. Volt Absorb. We go for our own Volt Switch now, because now it's going to go probably for Will-O-Wisp, I imagine. So now we go into Nasty Nick, who should be able to eat the Will-O-Wisp. There it is. Fire Punch to kill. Nice. Very clean start so far, boys. Extremely, it does not get cleaner than that. Okay, their own Infernape comes in here. So right here, I don't know exactly what it's going to be going for. So we are going to do a U-turn because we want to make sure we have Infernape just in case for Kangaskhan. And then it should either be going for Swords Dance or it might have been going for Close Combat. I don't believe this thing has a way to kill Sego's balls. Hold on. Oh, that's perfect. Perfect. Quad resisted. In the event that they switch, we're going to go Scald. Okay, there's the Pyro Ball. Really curious if we even survive this. I don't think we do. Just kind of curious. Wow, we do. Wow. That's really good information to have, actually. Really good info. Wow. This fight is going so well right now. King is gone, right? Yes. Perfect. We can burn the fake out turn. There it is. So what we're going to do is go Joler because it's the safest play. We get Intimidate off. I want to go Dragon Dance here. The only issue is if we get paralyzed. Then it's kind of a throw, but... Okay, there's the power up punch. This is good. This is actually fine. This gives us basically a free turn for that dragon dance. Now we're going to get a massive chunk of damage with Aqua Tail before Joler dies. Because now we just go with Drain Punch, get the kill. This is going so well so far, man. Holy shit. It's one of the cleanest fights I've ever had against this guy. Now comes the tricky part. Haunch Crow is an absolute beast, but we do outspeed. So what we can attempt to do here is survive a Sucker Punch and try to just go massive damage with Fire Punch. That's really our best bet. Ooh, we actually have sped! No Sucker Punch! It's going for Drill Peck! It's actually super, totally, actual fine. Like, completely fine. Dual Wing Beat should kill. GG. Oh my god. What a clean fight, dude. That legit might be the cleanest fight I've ever had against Giovanni 1. Actually just dominated, like not even a concern. Chat, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but this is the most successful run to this point in the game we've ever had. We've taken down basically every side trainer besides Whitney, and we have some good rain dance options to deal with uh, the second Giovanni fight. So the only huge obstacle we have until Sabrina should be that double battle. Chat, I have a secret huge strat to get a massive dub. A problem we have been running into is that the fight in the double battle in Sylphco is a big pain in the ass. Which by the way, that fight is no longer a best two out of three. It is simply, I have three chances to beat it. <laughs> I am officially making that the rule now for that fight because it is stupid and the bullshit and very RNG. However, I think we might first try it regardless. And here's why, okay? The way that fight starts, they send out an Incineroar, which intimidates us, which cuts our attack in half. And they send out a Gothitelle that also gets intimidated, which makes its special attack skyrocket. So we run into a, a problem where we're like, well, do we kill Incineroar? Do we, we need some sort of special attacker? We need something that outspeeds. We run into problems. You know what solves a lot of that problem? How about a... Crawdont, a water dark type, so it doesn't get hurt by psychic type moves at all, or fire type moves, or dark type moves, and has hyper cutter, which means its attack can't get dropped. So intimidate does nothing. We could, if we wanted to, we could just aqua jet turn one on the incineroar and see what happens, because it simply cannot stay in against my. Crawdont. Also, chat, my Crawdont strat, if Crawdont lives to fight against the um, the Hone Edge or whatever it's called, the, the Aegislash, I have Taunt on it, so that way we can Taunt it and not just let it continue to spam the Protect thing it has and force it to actually attack, which gives us a chance to actually kill it. Like, I thought about all the strats, chat. You have no idea. Why, uh, why haven't you updated the game? Do you just want to play what you've learned thus far? Pretty much, man. We started this run on 3.1, like, a couple months ago. And for continuity purposes, I'm staying on 3.1 until I beat this challenge. But then after that, anything I do with Radical Red after that, obviously, will be on the newest patch. So, so this rival fight, really not too bad, especially with the team we currently have. Um, 
Our biggest issue here is just making sure we play smart, which is obviously an issue sometimes for me because I'm an idiot. Staraptor comes out first. It intimidates Jolteon. We immediately go for Volt Switch here because nothing can really switch into Jolteon here. So it essentially gives us a free switch out and also damage on anything that gets hit. It's probably gonna go for an electric move, which would let me go back into Jolt a lot. Okay, I gotta see what it's going for here. I'm assuming Ice Punch. Yes, okay. Surprise Pokemon doesn't do more plasma moves. It's like an untapped cat. It went for close combat, man. Like, what are you doing? Why are you going for that? You're so incredibly cringe. Eh, it's also fine. Oh my God, it's not fine. Oh, that's so cringe. Dude, okay. All right, all right, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Gale Wing's dual wing beat will kill. Could bullet punch and do damage before it U-turns or just go for Psy Shield Ram for major damage? Cause it's going to switch into, it's gonna go into Dar Darmanitan. Yeah, we just go Psy Shield Ram here. It actually stayed in. Wow, that's crazy actually. It actually stayed in. It's just throwing Star After away. Honestly, I respect that. That's actually the smartest play that he could probably make with this thing. Pretty good kill. Three Pokemon left. He's sending in Blastoise. Why? Wait, I guess to Mega Evolve and go for Water Pulse would be the play. This is actually kind of ideal for us. And this is just free damage. This is We just take the damage here. He shouldn't be able to one-shot. His defense is going to skyrocket here, but Psy Shield Bash should still do a decent amount. And we're mostly just going for chip damage. Oh, he's going Shell Smash. Oh, that's right. Uh, this actually should do good damage then. I did forget about this though. This is, um, okay. So we just need to do big damage here. Um, ooh, that's really good. That's very good. Okay, so in the event that Metagross dies right here, we can go into our um, Talon Flame and dual wing beat and kill because this might kill mega evolve blast waste with a shell smash yeah oh you get a crit fuck you thankfully we still have gale wings available so we should be fine uh, we're gonna protect just to see what it's going for just because i'm curious okay it is going for flare blitz so this is fine we're gonna volt switch out i think we have this in the bag chat it got a little closer than i wanted it to but I think we got this. Now we simply Thunderbolt chat. And if we die, we just send in our Gale Wings Talonflame and kill this thing. Oh, goodness. That was very close. A little too close for comfort. I almost uh, had a bit of an accident. All right. So our teammate leads with a Masquerade, which is nice. So we're going to go again. We lead here so we don't get intimidated. And then we just bring these two as backup and see what happens. This fight sucks so much. <laughs> our hope here, chat... We want Masquerade to use a Bug Buzz on Gothitelle. That is what we want it to do on turn one. So we protect turn one to avoid getting hit by Fake Out. Nice, nice. Good start, good start. Bug Buzz on Gothitelle. Gothitelle, please. Nice. One shot it, one shot it, one shot it. Okay, it doesn't one shot it, but that's okay. This, this is fine. It did the damage I needed it to do. So this is good. Ooh, and it didn't die. Big actually big. Gothitelle needs to die, but Incineroar, I might be able to one-shot here. So we might be able to get a double knockout. I'm just going to make sure Gothitelle dies. I need to get it off the field because Masquerade should be able to do a massive amount of damage here to Incineroar with either Bug Buzz or Scald. So this is fine. This will do probably half his health. Parting Shot's fine because it doesn't, it can't lower my attack. So Parting Shot's fine. This switches Incineroar out. Cream Arena comes in. Okay. That's what I expected. So we are going to protect this turn to see if maybe Masquerade can get some cheeky damage here for free. Okay, that's unfortunate. I was kind of hoping Houndoom would attack me instead, but it's fine. Does this one shot? No, okay. There's the Focus Blast, but why are you targeting Houndoom? Why are you targeting Houndoom? The pre is gonna... <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's actually fine. It's fine, it's fine. It is fine. It went for Psychic instead, which is actually good. Now, thankfully, our Cronon is alive here, which is good. Um, what we need to do is go for Taunt on Aegislash. The reason we don't go Knock Off is so we don't get hit by that. That's a huge Mega Drain. Should be good health healing. Holy damage. Oh my god, that was huge. Wow. And it went for Scald. Perfect. Wow, this is going really well, actually. This is going really, really well. So now that the Aegislash is taunted, it shouldn't be able to use King's Shield. 
which means I should get a knockoff here for relatively free. Because here comes the Mega Drain. Premarine is going to die. And Aegislash doesn't have anything that can one-shot King of Sand. So we should get a free knockoff here. It's going to go into attack mode, which means its physical defense is going to blow major giant dicks. This is going to do a lot of damage to Sceptile. Doesn't kill. Knockoff comes in. Oh my god. Oh, this is going so well! I told you guys the Crawdon strat. I told you the Crawdon strat was key. I told you. So now all three Pokemon on the right side are out. So now it is going to be a constant 2v1, which is exactly what we want in this fight. I think this is Hidden Power Ground. Play rough is fine. Again, Crawdon has done his job. Good shit. Oh, we finally get to fight Giovanni again. Oh, I'm so hyped, dude. Finally get to fight Giovanni 2 again. Oh my god. It's been so long. It's been so long, dude. Weeks. Didn't even need the three tries. Didn't even need it. The Crawdon carry went huge. Politoed Drizzle combined with the rest of our team with Gyarados Dragon Dancing should be a massive dub. We will not need Jolteon in this fight. We will bring in Torterra and we should have a massively huge dub here. I really do think this team should be able to win this. Stealth Rock pretty much guarantees that Excadrill should not be a problem. It really just depends on how the AI plays around Hippowdon. Because if it plays really trolly around Hippowdon, it could get a little weird. So I'm hoping it doesn't get too trolly there. I am nervous, but I'm confident. I am nervous, but I'm confident. We win these. We win these every day of the week. Let's fucking go, boys. It is time. We have to put our plan into action. Two hours of theory crafting for this. Surely we don't choke. Surely. This first turn is incredibly important. What does the Hippowdon do? Okay, it goes Stealth Rock. That is expected. That is fine. It's expected. We set up our own Stealth Rocks. So now, again, what does the Hippowdon do? We go for Earthquake. It's using Roar, I believe here. It is using Roar. Oh, it went Earthquake. Good, okay, that's good for us. Wow, it got a crit. We don't necessarily have to lose Wrecking Ball here, but I would, if it's going Earthquake, we could get a free Intimidate in the Politoed, but we should be okay. Okay, so it, it is a bit, a bit of a speed tie here, it looks like, and it does kill, okay. Yeah, unfortunately that crit did matter, but it is what it is, you know? So now Peepo Sad comes in and we set up the rain. And now something has to swap into Rain Boosted Scald. And it doesn't. It just, he takes the loss. This is good. Hippowdon is off the field, which means no more, no more sand. Garchomp. Okay. Now Garchomp here is very interesting. Without Intimidate, I don't, th I don't think I survive an attack here. I am curious what it's going for. So we're going to protect for a turn. It is going for Scale Shot. Okay. Interesting. We do have max HP here, so I mean, we could, I mean, we have 222 HP. Realistically, Peepo Sad has kind of done its job here, so we could risk it, because most of its job was to just get sand off the field. That was its biggest job. I'm curious if we can actually survive this. I don't think Peepo Sad is necessary for finishing this fight. We have enough options to where we should be okay. Fuck it. How much does this do? Ooh, wait. Wait, Peepo Sad's going huge! What the fuck? It just tanked the hell out of that! That was big! That was so big! How much does this do? Oh, that's massive damage! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Oh my god, Peepo Sad's insane! Oh my god! Okay, don't kill. Just don't kill with Earthquake. Come on. Nice! Nice! Oh my god, a massive kill. A massive kill. Holy shit, Peepo Sad. Oh my god. Kangaskhan comes in. We know it's going for fake out. We know it's going fake out. We just protect this turn. He is probably going to body slam here, yes. So I think it is, at this point, we just send in Joler for the Intimidate. Okay, did go body slam. If it goes for that again, we're just kind of dead. But I am curious what it's going to go for here. So I'm going to protect for a turn. It is still going for body slam. I mean, I don't think there's a way we survive this. And there's no point in keeping Jolar alive because honestly, Citrus Berry would have actually been good here. Unfortunate that we didn't keep like a Citrus Berry on. We just go for damage in the, some miracle that we survive this. 
Yeah, no. That's fine. Joel did its job. I am going to send in Nasty Nick and hope that a Drain Punch kills and also, hopefully, it's not Poltegeist coming in. Nice. Nice. Huge that it didn't switch into Poltegeist. Massive that it didn't switch out because that's a kill. Oh my god, this is going so well. Now it's going to be Excadrill. Because there's no sand, we outspeed, we fire punch. We actually could have just drain punched too, honestly, but we didn't need the health. Oh my god. Oh god, yes! Fuck yes! Oh my god, dude. I'm gonna, I might actually, there might be a mess. There actually might be a mess. And I don't want to divulge what the mess is. All I know is that we have officially tied our PB. It could be the run where we finally get past Sabrina, dude. Oh my god. The rival was harder? Ah, kinda. In order to prepare for this fight, I devised an unbeatable strategy. This is the team we are bringing into this gym. You might be asking yourself, okay, dudes, you are about to go into a psychic gym. What is with this team? And I'll tell you, well, here's what the setup is gonna be. Now that we know we can get a Focus Sash, it makes it even better. Metagross, I have specifically given slightly over 100 attack EVs to guarantee a kill on the Hatterene. I do need to change its item. I still had Citrus Berry on it. It's going to have the wide lens on to guarantee that Meteor Mash hits every time. Okay, so pay no attention to the Citrus Berry there. Infernape, same as before. Fully trained in speed and attack, but now we have an attack nature because nothing is going to outspeed us, okay? This is our moveset. This is our moveset going into this gym. And again, I will explain why in a minute but I just know it's gonna be a cracked strat, okay? King of Sand, you might be thinking, this is a really dumb pick considering Psychic Surge will be up for the entire fight. Why are you bringing this thing that relies on Aqua Jet as like its main move? I'll tell you in a minute, but just so you know, fully trained in attack and fully trained in special defense with a slight itty bit amount in speed like one stat points worth in speed EVs, okay? Joler, full training and attack, full training and speed as always. Again, moveset is a little weird. It should do the job. We have Peepo Sad. Again, full training and special attack and the full training in HP. We also have Sceptile. Now this is probably the weirdest one, okay? This is the weirdest one we're bringing into this gym. It has its Mega Stone. When you look at the moves here, you're thinking this is dumb. <laughs> Like, what are you even doing, dude? You're going to a psychic gym. They're going to have fairy moves. You're bringing drain punch, fucking bullet seed. Like, what even is this, man? Let me now show you what Sabrina's team is, everybody. So she leads with Hatterene and Indeedee. Indeedee has Psychic Surge plus a Terrain Extender, which means we have to deal with Psychic Terrain being up the whole fight, which really just means that Psychic moves are going to be stronger and that nobody can use priority moves. Okay, that's really all that means. Because Hatterene has Magic Bounce, I cannot do anything with Stealth Rock until it's dead. I can't do anything with Spikes, Toxic Spikes, none of that. So all of those strategies, strategies I thought of weren't really going to work. Now you might be thinking, well, just take Hatterene off the field and then set those things up. And you'd be correct. The problem is, if Hatterene for some reason lives on turn one, it sets up Trick Room. We, in this fight, are doing anti-trick room. <laughs> we are going into this fight with a strategy devised around preventing trick room from going up at all costs. So our lead is going to be Infernape and it's going to be Metagross. With Metagross, we should have enough investment where we should be able to Meteor Mash the Hatterene and kill it in one hit. The plan is to U-turn Infernape out to bait Indeedee into a psychic attack. What's likely going to happen, what I'm hoping happens, is Indeedee goes for Expanding Force, or preferably just straight up Shadow Balls Metagross. That would be even better. This is not overthinking. I promise this is not overthinking because there's a lot we have to take into account here, okay? The hope is that Indeedee either Mystical Fires or Shadow Balls Metagross on that turn. That's the hope. We then hope that it does not switch into Porygon. If it goes into Porygon on the next turn, it gets a little weird. My hope is that it goes into Ursaluna because then 
After I U-turn Infernape out, I am going to put Sceptile in because Hatterene is going to be off the field. It is time for a new PB. Sabrina, I hope you're ready to get absolutely destroyed. We know what our strategy is. We poison jab the Hatterene and we meteor mash the Hatterene. That's about as much as I thought that would do. Now it's dead, no trick room set up. Okay, that is what I imagined would happen. This is why we have Focus Sash. Now we see what gets sent in. Again, nothing can switch in safely, except for maybe Ursaluna. Okay, that is what I imagined was going to switch in. So this is actually good. This is fine. It's going to go for Protect instead of really anything else, because it doesn't have Earthquake. Ursaluna wants to get its, um, its, its thing set up. It's, um, its Flame Orb set up. So it's going to use protect this turn to make sure that it gets burned. So what we do is we U-turn here and we make sure that we can kill the uh, the Ndidi on this turn. Okay, that's what I imagined was gonna happen. We get big damage on Ndidi before we leave. And then we assume it's going for expanding force again. So what we do is we go into King of Sand, dude. That's what I thought. Easy read, dude, easy read. Now Ursaluna has its flame orb. This is why we have a Citrus Berry on King of Sand. The Indeedee does not have anything that can actually threaten King of Sand. It has Hyper Voice, it has Expanding Force, Shadow Ball, and Mystical Fire. None of which really do anything here. So we just go huge here. We go Liquidation on Ursaluna, and we switch Metagross here because we assume it's either going to go for Facade or it's going to go for some like ground move, okay? So we go into Joler for Intimidate purposes. That cuts Ursaluna's attack. It went for Protect again, which is totally fine. That's actually incredibly fine. Shadow Ball here, it's kind of what I thought. Honestly, totally fine. That wastes a turn of the Surge. What we can do on this turn is simply double protect. This just wastes a turn of Psychic Surge. We protect against any of the bullshit. It's going for Facade. Now, again, we force pressure onto the Ursaluna. So we're gonna see if the Ursaluna gets greedy. Okay, that's what I thought. That's fine. We have to eat a Hyper Voice here. Hurts quite a bit. It was a critical hit though. Again, we get another free double protect here if we want to. Okay, Ursaluna went for Protect here, which is good. Because that means it wasted its Protect turn on nothing. Which means our strategy here should work. We are going to go once again for Liquidation here. And we are going to go for Aqua Tail. Big damage coming in. Oh my god. Oh my god. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Perfect. 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 Oh, it went for Mystical Fire. Even better. Wow, it's throwing. Indeed, you're an idiot. Why would you go Mystical Fire? You're so dumb. Huge kill. Oh my fucking God. Yes, man. Okay. Okay. Now, the tricky part is we really hope it's not Porygon here. If it's Porygon, okay, thank God. Okay, huge. It went for Crawdon, huge. If it went Porygon there, she actually had a chance to win. We are going to double protect to see what she is going for here. We're doing Hyper Voice and it's going for Knock Off, okay. And it was trying to knock off the leftovers on Joler. It's gonna use knockoff. It's gonna do a lot of damage. We don't necessarily need Joler after this. So this is honestly fine. We are going to attempt to set up one Dragon Dance and see what happens. Cause there is a way where having Dragon Dance here could be a difference maker if Porygon comes in next, which I'm imagining it does. If it dies to Crawdon's knockoff, it's honestly fine. Okay, that's fine. This is where we have to go with Nasty Nick. <sighs> Okay, that's actually not bad. That's actually kind of good because having it trace Iron Fist is fine. Okay, a little bit of a cheeky play we can do here. Ooh, but the Crawdont has its own Aqua Jet. Interesting. That's gonna make it a little weird. Okay, we are going to go for damage on Gardevoir and we are going to send in Peepo Sad because this will get Rain Dance set up. So that way this Aqua Jet does a massive amount of damage. Oh my god, that did so much damage. That's what I thought was gonna happen. Oh shit! Oh, I forgot about- I forgot Gardevoir has Trick Room. Okay, that makes things a little weird. Gardevoir's base speed is 80. Hippo Sads is 70. Metagross's is 70. So we will still outspeed Gardevoir with those two Pokemon. So because Trick Room is up, Hypothetically speaking, Metagross and Peepo Sad should both outspeed Gardevoir. The problem is that Crawdon is going to outspeed Metagross. So what we're gonna do is protect with Metagross this turn, 
and we are going to go for Scald in the rain against Gardevoir. Because we don't want to get hit by a super effective knockoff right here. Easiest read of all time. That kills, which is very good. These are her last two Pokemon. We need to play this very carefully. Knockoff from Crawdon is going to do a massive amount of damage here to Metagross. We still have multiple turns of Trick Room that we would have to stall out. It is pretty imperative <laughs> that we don't lose Metagross just yet. The problem with putting Sceptile in without having speed control is the Porygon has Ice Beam, which we really don't want to eat a quad effective Ice Beam. So what we need to do is be able to stall a couple of turns here. We are going to let Nasty Nick get hit here. And then we are going to, I think, protect this turn with Peepo Sad. Although I imagine it might be going Thunderbolt, maybe. So yeah, three turns of Trick Room. So this would be one turn. We then have another turn. Yeah, so by the time Trick Room's done, we should be able to just win from there. It's going to be a little weird, though. It, it is legitimately going to be a little weird. Peepo Sad is going to flip turn. I think we're going to, just in case, we will break the Crawdon Sash. Okay, good. Okay, there's the Thunderbolt. Should be able to tank one of these. Oh, actually, multiple of those. Very nice. So, this turn, we are going to protect with both of our Pokemon, which wastes another turn of Trick Room. Now, it, we, there should be one turn of Trick Room. So this is the last turn of Trick Room. It's gonna get a little weird here. As long as both of these don't die on this turn, we should be fine. Do we actually survive this? I was very curious. We do not. That is why I did what I did. That is why I did what I did. You thought we could survive that. I told you it wasn't gonna happen. Thunderbolt comes in. As long as it's not a crit, we should be fine. No crit. Perfect. We kind of need a huge turn here. We have to go all out offensive on Porygon to make sure it dies. <laughs> this is the turn of the century here. Need a kill. Ooh, that's not a lot of damage. That's not a lot of damage. No! Please, 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 please. No way. No way we got two hits with Bullet Seed. There's no way we just got two hits with Bullet Seed. Are you kidding me? Oh my god, it went for Trick Room. Dude, there's no way we just got two fucking hits of Bullet Seed. You're actually kidding. Oh my god, man. We lost. GG. 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 Actually, GG. The Porygon surviving is because we got fucked with RNG, man. That's why. It's Eviolite, so I knew it was going to be able to tank multiple hits, which is why we didn't go Drain Punch. But I thought that maybe we'd get more than two hits, dude. I, I, like, I can't believe it. Just the worst possible RNG. Retry, retry, retry. You guys keep seeing retry. Dude, I just retried, like, a run ago, dude. For your sanity and ours... Run the poll, retry, but if I lose again, I gift 10. Literally double my last retry if I lose. Specifically on the Sabrina fight, obviously, obviously. obviously. This doesn't count battles after Sabrina. <laughs> and there are some micro adjustments. Again, I will, I will, same team, same, I'm not gonna make any changes to the team because obviously that's not how the retries. The only other time we've ever done a retry, we went in with the same team, same items, same leads, same everything. I think with some slightly better play and remembering that Gardevoir has Trick Room, I think we win that. I obviously will not vote for um, uh, Wow, we got a fifth vote, crazy. Okay, cool. We get to try again. With those stats, even the lowest roll should die. Wait, is that true? Did I actually get the legitimate worst possible RNG? I had to make another counter here. <laughs> we are going into attempt number two. This is what we have to work with. We are going to play very smart, do the best we can, and hopefully not get absolutely destroyed. We go Poison Jab on Hatterene. We go Meteor Mash on Hatterene. This guarantees that they don't set up Trick Room yet. I'm assuming indeed he goes for Expanding Force like it did last time. <gasps> That's actually better. That's actually better. 
Wait, wait, it went Gardevoir. This is actual. wait, 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 actually it's not good. Oh, okay, Gardevoir this early is a little weird. <laughs> okay, this is actually still doable. I just have to figure out exactly how I want this to go. Poison Jab is gonna hit first on Gardevoir. Gardevoir is going to Mega Evolve. It will have 100 base speed, so we should still outspeed. Poison Jab should connect. If it doesn't kill in one hit, it will set up its own Trick Room. We Poison Jab here and we just make sure the, the Gardevoir dies this turn. Because there's no way this Gardevoir outspeeds. Zero chance. Okay, if this kills, great. I don't think it does. Yeah, okay. Ooh, wait. What? How do I outspeed? Wait, what? I have 70 base speed. How did I just outspeed that? Oh, because Trick Room. Wait, because it was going Trick Room. <gasps> Because it was going Trick Room, which has negative priority. What a huge kill. Oh my God, I just, oh my God, I, oh my God. Wait, that was actually so good. That was so good. Oh my God, that was so good. We have two Trick Room setters already dead. Send in the Porygon. Send in the Porygon. <laughs> Do it, send in the Porygon. Oh my God, it went for Trick Room. Negative priority Trick Room. Okay, Ursaluna, this is actually good. This is good. This is legitimately good. <laughs> we go right here, because it's gonna, Ursaluna is gonna go for protect. So we U-turn the Ndidi and we protect Metagross. We go Joler here for the Intimidate. So we're gonna protect. Metagross is gonna switch out just in case Ursaluna is attacking Metagross here. And we're going to send in Sad. This sets up Rain Dance which is gonna make our Aqua Tail go insanely huge. There's the Shadow Ball, that's perfectly fine. We tank those every day of the week. What a fucking hard read, oh my God, what a hard read. What a hard read, the Jolers are winning this for us, boys. The Jolers, oh my voice cracked. Hold on, I have to do that again. The Jolers are winning it for us. I'm doing a second take of this because my voice cracked, the Joler. <laughs> we are going to go for a cheeky Dragon Dance. And then Peepo sat in case Ursaluna is not protecting. Yeah, fuck it. Okay, the Ursaluna did not do any sort of protecting here, which is interesting. This is going to do a lot of damage. Rain boosted Scald, max special attack. Probably doesn't. I'm gonna nut. I'm actually gonna nut. I'm go. It's going to happen. The fact that that just one shot is so incredibly fucking huge. Oh my god. Send in the Crawdon. Send in Crawdon. Perfect. Psychic terrain still up, shitter. Huge play right here. Check this shit out. Check it 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 out. We go Dragon Tail on the Crawdont, and we flip turn on Indeedee. This is a massive play. Ow. Oh my god. That does so much damage. <laughs> Get out of here, shitter. Switch out. There's that fucking Porygon. There's that shitter. Oh, Trace Intimidate. Good thing I sent in Metagross, shitter. We already broke the sash on the Crawdont. The psychic terrain is still up, all right? We simply put, all we do here is protect with Gyarados. And then we brick break that fucking Cronaunt. Cronaunt's dead. Yeah, set up Trick Room, set up Trick Room. Yeah, set up Trick Room, go for it, go for it. Honestly, totally fine. Set up your Trick Room. You can only kill one of me. You can only kill one, Jitter. Yeah, you chose the idiot one too. Oh my God. You can only kill one. I wonder if I could force it to make another choice. Mm. What's it gonna do? Watch this shit, dude. Watch this. Absolute trollage is about to happen. Protect. Protect. Oh, we're gonna attack. Oh, you're gonna attack Nasty Nick. Oh, that's crazy. Wonder if I um. What if I just uh? What if I just uh? Let's do a little bit of this action here. What if I just do a little bit of that and a little bit, uh, a little bit more of this? What if I just uh, protect and protect? Mm. Mm. You know what? Let's let's just you know here. Let you know for the you know if you're gonna thunderbolt, you know we just you might as well. We might as well. And just maybe get some revenge. Oh, you set up trick room again. Mm. It's really interesting that you did that, man, because um, lots of hard feelings. Extremely hard feelings, shitter. Enjoy Ooh. death. Oh, nice ice beam in the rain, idiot. Now watch this shit, though. 
That's fine. Ah, we had to give him a chance. <laughs> I wanted to let Septile get revenge, dude. <laughs> it is now time to bid thee farewell, Mr. Porygon 2. Get fucking destroyed. Oh my god. Wow, it's crazy what happens when we don't get the absolute worst RNG imaginable. Wow. Chat, you know what that is? That's a PB. <laughs> like a month after I got to Sabrina the first time. <laughs> Finally, a new PB, man. Oh my god. It's been so long. This is uncharted territory. We've never gotten this far. But, you know, feels good. And... Because I feel only slightly scummy, I will... I'll give this up. So, enjoy it. Whoever gets it. Holy shit! I have really almost never used the damage calculator before, but I imagine... I imagine it was probably like a plus defense or something, sort of like Porygon, or maybe plus special. I don't know. Somehow it survived, and I don't know. But thankfully, we got the PB, dude.